Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Food Heals Podcast, Episode 187. If you eat one cup of green leafies a day, your brain is 11 years younger than someone who doesn't have any. 11 years. I mean, that's a lot. Wait a minute. This is new information. This is one we haven't heard before. Okay. Is it, is it cumulative? Because Alice and I would be like 10 year olds at this point. I, I'm like eight. Holistic <laughs> Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. And today we're chatting with Dr. Stephen Masley. Dr. Masley is a physician, nutritionist, author, trained chef, and the creator of the number one health program for public television, 30 Days to a Younger Heart. He helps motivate people, tune up their brain, heart, and sexual performance. Yes, and he has published several books, 10 Years Younger, The 30-Day Heart Tune-Up, and of course, his latest book is The Better Brain Solution. Today, we're talking all about brain health, plus the steps to take to improve our brain function, get rid of that brain fog, and even prevent Alzheimer's disease. But first, we're heading to Sundance this weekend. Are you so excited? I'm so excited. I even <laughs> that was fake. That was fake. No, it wasn't. It was like me doing my... No, I I'm really so am. I you interrupted me. I was going to say I'd bought new snow boots for it, but it was not fake. I am offended. Ooh. Can yes. you send me a picture of snow boots? No. Are we going? You don't deserve them. We... You didn't believe Are you me. Mad at me? Yes. Are you, mad at me? you interrupted me and you're like, that's fake. No, it wasn't. <gasps> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's awesome. not a fake too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so excited. I, I, again, I'm still like, oh my God, we're going to, it's going to be so much fun. I'm so proud of you. You're going to be speaking. Oh, I'm excited to speak. It's going to be a panel for indie filmmakers. Whoop, whoop. And then they're going to interview both of us for their YouTube channel as podcasters. So I'm excited for both of us. Yay. So do you guys know what Sundance is? It is literally the largest independent film festival in the U.S. It's a, no it's, biggie. It's the, no cool, biggie. it's the coolest. Is it the it's largest? It's the cool one. Because it's supposed to be indie. It's the largest indie in the U.S. So it doesn't include like can or con. So much fun. It's just an honor to be going. I'm just it's saying. It's an honor to be nominated. <laughs> We're not nominated for shit, but. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yes. Not that they nominate podcasters, but I wish they yes. did. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Anyway, if you want to come, if you're going to be in Park City, Food Heals Nation, come to our event. It is on January 21st. It's a social networking mixer and cocktail reception and panel discussion. We're going to talk about independent filmmaking, and it's going to be fun. Uh, I hope you can be there. So if you want to come, it's at Bodega on Main, 710 Main Street, Park City, Utah, 1.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. We truly hope to see you there. What else? What else? Where else are we going this year? Oh, my God. That's right. Italy. <laughs> oh, that's right. I almost forgot. We're going to Italy. Food Hills Nation is going to Italy. Who's coming? Who wants Who's- to come? We have room. Yep. But we not have that room. Much. Not that much. Yes. <laughs> so sign up now. We're not going to stop talking about it until you sign up. So you might as well just sign up 
right now. There are how many spots? Nine spots. Uh, except, well, we have a few books. So I think now there's six spots. Yeah. It's a beautiful Italian villa on the Amalfi Coast, which is my favorite. I lived in Italy, people. I lived there for a year in a few different places. This was my favorite place. This is where I want to go back. When I when I heard we're going to Amalfi, I was like, hell yes, I'm in. Um, <laughs> it's spectacular. It's on the east coast of Italy. It is just spectacularly beautiful. You're going to learn how to cook vegan meals. We're going to go on excursions. I speak Italian, so I will be your tour guide. You want to negotiate a price on uh, anything you're buying? I'm there. We're going to take a boat trip. We're going to go swimming. It's phenomenal. Oh, my God. I'm taking you everywhere because I love like haggling and negotiating. So if I like want to buy a cute dress or something, you can help me get the price down? Yes. If they okay. if they neg- if they haggle and negotiate, not everybody does. <laughs> not everybody does. I know. I don't know about Italy. I mean, I just know a lot of times when I travel, that's part of it, and I'm not good at they it. Do, so yeah, they do in markets and marketplaces and like you know flea markets and types of stuff like that. If it's in an actual store, they no, that's not happening. But we can pretend. But the main reason to come, in my opinion, is that the villa has an infinity pool cliffside. No biggie infinity pool people like we're gonna just be relaxing with a glass of italian red wine in an infinity pool overlooking the amalfi coast so why aren't you signing up right now where should they go to sign up Suze? go to www.foodhealsnation.com slash italy don't forget the www people you need to use it that's www.foodhealsnation.com slash italy Italia. Thank you, Susie. All right. We're going to talk more about Italy after our interview with the incredible Dr. Masley. Next up, our interview with Dr. Masley. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. He is a fellow with three prestigious organizations, the American Heart Association, the American College of Nutrition, and the American Academy of Family Physicians. And we are so happy to have him. Welcome, Dr. Masley. I'm delighted to be with you. Yes, we're so glad to have you. So just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, I'm a physician, nutritionist, and a chef. I've written several books, but my favorite is the latest, The Better Brain Solution. And I run a clinic in St. Petersburg, Florida. And it's pretty fun. We get to assess how people age. So we look at how they're aging on the inside. What's their artery plaque growth? How old are they? How's their brain functioning? What's their brain speed? How's their memory? Uh, Are they meeting their nutrient needs? Are they as fit as they should be? You know, my goal is to help people feel fantastic and at the same time, help them improve so they're mentally sharper, quicker, more productive, and they prevent memory loss. And we have really fantastic results. We've published a series of studies showing that our average patient really is younger, trimmer, fitter, mentally sharper, prevents heart disease, and they feel great. So it's been really fun to get to do this as a doctor. I mean, who would have thought that was possible? Let's talk about that because you're a rarity. Many of the MDs that I meet, that I've worked with, don't take nutrition quite so seriously. Even when I've visited friends in hospitals, you see what they're fed when they're not well and nutrition is out the window. So can you tell us a little bit about when you started or you know, what, along what point of your journey being a doctor that nutrition came into play? Well, in college, someone said to me once, if I really wanted to make a difference in my patients, this is someone I really respected, my advisor. He said, you want to be a doctor? You should learn to write um, recipes because that's going to make all the difference. And I thought, Okay, that's a pretty cool thought. <laughs> so this was, I, you know, I was still studying chemistry and biology. I didn't, even, I didn't even got to medical school yet, but I started catering cooking dinners. I started a little side catering job, and I was trying to cook healthy, delicious food. And so this is something I started doing back in the 80s, you know, 70s. You know, it's, so it's, I've been doing this for a while, and over time, I was doing research projects as a physician, and I just and one of my patients said to me once, you know, I was trying to tell her how many grams of fat she could eat and how many fiber grams she had to get and blah, 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 and all this scientific doo-doo. And she just took me by the hand and said, if you'll just give me recipes I can cook that will taste good and that are easy to prepare, that's all I'll make. And I said, okay, that's a deal. So I went, 
I went back to the Four Seasons restaurant and did a one-year chef internship. Wow. Trying to improve my recipes so that when I wrote recipes in a book, they would be delicious, easy to prepare, and they would nourish your heart, brain, and soul. So that's really been my goal for years. And I think, yeah, that's it's been a, a labor of love, and it's made a huge difference in my patients' lives. That is incredible. I love it. I, so you went the, the you, so you already knew when you got to medical school, you already knew the importance of nutrition and eating properly. Uh, they didn't teach us any nutrition in medical school. I know that's why I'm that's why I'm trying to find out a, where where it came. So, but you already had that knowledge before you got there. That's what I'm saying. The doctors that I've spoken to, they're like, we had ten hours of nutrition classes, oh. and I'm like, ten hours. I've had. Yeah, more I had time. four hours, and that was an elective. It wasn't even required. Yeah. Wow. That was it in four years of medical school. It's so wrong. And the fact is that just like Susie said, it's like other people who are other types of health practitioners get more nutrition in school than doctors do. And why is it so backwards? Uh, well, you know, it, it's fortunately it is gradually changing, but it's glacial changing. I wish it was changing as fast as the global climate, but it's probably not. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just weird. I I mean, health, food is the fundamental part. I mean, you, you get it with your podcast, Food Heals. It does. It's the primary thing that makes us sick or well. We yeah. feel fantastic or we feel awful. Food makes all the difference. So, you know, I just believe this from the beginning. And, you know, I had to learn along the way. I ended up getting a nutrition degree after I became a chef. I wanted to wow. ensure my nutrients were better. So I went and got, you know, a nutrition certification and then I published like 10 studies on nutrition and health so I could become a fellow with the American College of Nutrition. And, you know, I've, so I've just kind of, and now I've been involved with them for 25 years. I mean, so I, I feel blessed. I fell into the right path. You know, you, you walk around you behind, um, you know, teachers and sometimes they lead you the right way. And I felt like I got right, led the right way. Absolutely. And thank you for what you do, because that helps all of us who are going to our doctors and not even knowing we need to seek nutrition in some cases, not even knowing how important it is. So thank you for the work that you do. And you have a new book, The I Better do. Brain Solution. So what made you write this book? Well, in our clinic, so we do assessments and we look at your brain speed and your brain performance and your literally we measure processing speed, like how fast does your computer go? And we look at memory scores and we then we've analyzed over a thousand patients and we've looked at their food they eat and their nutrient intake and their fitness. And when you analyze that, then you can identify what lifestyle choices do we make improve brain performance and which ones hurt it. So avoid the things that hurt it. Do more of the things that make it better, like blueberries. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not so difficult. Right. And, and the results are fantastic. We have our average patient becomes 25 to 30 percent mentally sharper, more productive. They actually have an increase in their brain processing speed. It's almost like someone gave them a faster computer to work with. And we've done randomized clinical trials and showed it works. So, I mean, that would be totally selfish not to share this. So I'm thinking, all right, I've got a great plan for my program. I know it works. I've got to write a book, get it out there, share the message. And I'm just really glad there's um, podcasts like yours where you have listeners who are motivated that want to improve their health. And who doesn't want a brainer, better brain? I mean, who wouldn't want to be mentally sharper, quicker, and more productive? I mean, everyone wants that. I feel like we're we're constantly going to these um, temporary solutions, whether it's caffeine or an energy drink or coffee or whatever, in order to have a temporarily boosted brain. But that's not a long-term solution. So I love what you're doing. And tell us more about what we can do. I know you mentioned the blueberries. What are some other things in the book? Well, there's really five steps, and they work better together than if you only do one step. I mean, when the, the recent studies show the combination of several lifestyles at once are dramatically better than only doing one little aspect at a time. So it may be we've got to jump in there and make some significant change, not just a tiny change if you really want a better brain. But, you know, number one is food. You know, foods heal. <laughs> number two is key nutrient needs. Number three would be fitness. There's both physical and mental fitness. 
four is stress reduction, and five is toxin avoidance. There's a lot of toxins in food that we really need to avoid. So those are the five key steps. You are speaking our language. Absolutely. Um, You mentioned that there was mental exercise as well. I would love to start with physical and mental exercise. Well, when we looked at our data, one of the Actually, one of the strongest predictors of someone being mentally sharper, quicker, more productive was their fitness. It didn't matter how many minutes they worked out per week. What matters is how well you can get your heart rate up and huff and puff. You know, how fit are you? And then also, how's your strength? So independently, your aerobic fitness, your ability you know, to huff and puff and get sweaty, That's super important, but equally important was your strength, you know, doing strength training. And I think, you know, women probably are not as participatory in strength training and women probably benefit more from adding it because it's not like necessarily their key, at least the patients I see. I'm just speaking from experience in my clinic. Most of the women would rather do aerobic. Um, The guys would rather do strength training, but both of them are beneficial. So um, I think we really have to add both those and and cognitive tip. And also we want mental training. We want to learn new things. We want, you know, learn a new language, play a musical instrument, take up Sudoku, whatever you're good at. That's great. Keep doing it, but keep adding new things regularly. So you constant learning that also improves your brain performance. I love learning new things. So I'm in. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's another step? So food, I, I, you know, food's probably my favorite. You know, I love to cook. I love recipes and I'm really proud of my recipes in the Better Brain Solution book. There's kind of like three groups of food that improve your brain. First is plant pigments. I mean, let me give you some examples. Number one would be like green leafy vegetables. You know, they don't sound super sexy, but when you think about it, not if to us. Eat, they're so sexy. Okay. Well, I'm glad you, well, you and I feel that way, but sometimes when I'm talking to an average audience, your audience is probably exceptional. But when I'm talking to an average American audience and I say green leafies, they look like disappointed. But when I tell them, here's the key point. If you eat one cup of green leafies a day, your brain is 11 years younger than someone who doesn't have any. 11 years. I mean, that's a lot. Wait a minute. This is new information. This is one we haven't heard before. Okay. Is it, is it cumulative? Because Alice and I would be like 10 year olds at this point. No, I, I'm like, no, no. Eight. But it's like if you look at, you know, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 60 year olds, and those who eat green leafies and those who don't, consistently, those people who eat more greens have younger, healthier brains. Yes. I'm like a little kid over here. So you should and be so- like 11 years younger. Yes. I love this. Why not? I mean, and they're awesome. I love green. And it's really how you cook with them, right? I mean, whether it's kale or spinach or broccoli or Brussels sprouts or bok choy or cat, I mean, they all count. They're all awesome. So a cup a day, come on, that's not that hard is what I say to people. No, it's 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 not not that hard. And your brain will be 11 years younger. But you also want other colorful vegetables. Like one of my other favorites is beets. It's super good for your heart. You said sexy. Well, it's even good for your sex life because it improves circulation for men and women. And it's fantastic for your brain because beets, beets increase blood flow to the frontal lobes of your brain. That's just what we do problem solving and advanced thinking with. So all the colorful vegetables are great. They block inflammation, oxidation. That's what ages our brain. But beets have a special spot. So all colorful vegetables, are, we should be getting at least minimum three cups of colorful vegetables every day, right? I mean, can't we do that? Yes, we can do that. And I love the beets because I try to do a lot of beets too because it's very good for the liver. And Susie and I drink red wine on occasion. And so I want to keep my liver Sometimes. flow and my liver clean. Sometimes, <laughs> once in a while. Not today, but um, many on occasion we have. And so I think the, the colorful vegetables is really good because it's getting into all those different organs and the brain including the gut, all that good stuff. Absolutely. And then other plant pigments that are really good are like chocolate and cocoa. Now it's got to be dark. We're not counting, we're not counting milk chocolate. Like it's like candy. 80% Mm -hmm. would be like, or more is best, but even 74% dark chocolate has clear brain benefits and heart benefits. I mean, no doubt about it. So we love our, our dark chocolate. We've got addictive wellness, which is our favorite chocolate that 
is actually full of superfoods and super herbs, but I will never say no to dark chocolate as long as I live. And then green tea has a pigment, catechins that are really nice for your brain. Especially my favorite would be the- matcha tea, which has extra theanine in it. It has eight times the theanine as regular green tea. And that's super good for being able to focus and pay attention. So green tea is really nice for your brain. Now, you mentioned coffee. Well, it turns out that coffee, but it's got to be in moderation. You can't do an excess. One or two cups of coffee a day, and it's the pigment. Even decaf has benefit. It's not the caffeine. Even a little bit of coffee every day, but not more than three cups a day, a little bit is good for your brain from those pigments. Uh, this if is I a had- newsflash to me. Ali, did you know this? Well, I know that that um, coffee can be good for the brain, but I think what's so important is the source of the coffee and the coffee beans, right, Dr. Masley? Well, I mean, you do. I think your point is, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess, is that it's got to be clean. It's not pesticides. So, or of all, you know, of all the things that we should buy organic, I always think of the, you know, environmental group Dirty Dozen. But I also think of coffee and tea because they tend to be tainted pretty easily. Is that what you were referring to? Yeah, because, you know, you said one of the steps was something along the lines of not letting those toxins into your diet. And so I I know, unfortunately, that many of the practices in the coffee industry do have a lot of toxic ingredients. And so that's why I'm just saying, like, knowing your source, then you can have beneficial coffee. Yeah, I, make it, I totally agree with you. And then that some of them have mold. Some people are sensitive to molds and coffee can actually be a big source of mold if you're sensitive. So that's a not, not just pesticides, but mold toxins as well. It's another issue you have to consider. And then you mentioned red wine. Well, of all the alcohol, the only alcohol source that appears to have benefit for the brain is probably red wine. And again, it's clearly a moderation. We're not, we're talking one glass a day is best, definitely not more than two, a whole bottle a day. Who are you kidding? That's not good for your brain. (laughs) Susie and I might be kidding ourselves some of these, some of these nights. (laughs) But... One or two glasses of red wine a day. If you look at all the data internationally, there's almost a dozen studies that show red wine is good for your brain. But I'm I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize to the beer and hard liquor drinkers. There's no benefit for your brain. And actually, there's probably just not good for your brain um, drinking um, hard liquor and beer. At least red wine. Okay, we're in. (laughs) I think those are examples of plant pigments we want more of. Something else we want are smart fats. I mean... You know, for years, healthcare people, I mean, back in the 90s, I have to admit, I was part of it. We promoted a low fat diet, thinking it was on the right side of evidence, but we were wrong. And now there's this recent study out showing they did a randomized trial and looked at brain function. And they found people on the low fat diet had an increased loss in memory and decreased cognitive performance if they're on a low fat diet. And people who got extra, extra virgin olive oil or they got extra nuts, their brain performance went up and their memory loss rate went down. So I think we can stop arguing over whether you should be on a low fat diet or not. No, we should be eating smart fats like extra virgin olive oil and nuts and dark chocolate and... Um, avocado, and I love cooking with avocado oil and nut oils. That's kind of like my favorite cooking oils, to be honest. Oh, they're so good. I love uh, hazelnut oil and walnut oil. Ooh. Yeah, just walnut yeah. oil, remember, is low heat as a small smoke point. Well, actually, rather more like salad dressings and things yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. So salad walnut. dressing, walnut oil is awesome. And yeah, I totally agree. It's fantastic on a salad. So, but, but cooking with olive oil, because I know each oil has a different flash point. Can we talk about that? So cooking with the olive oil is okay? So extra virgin olive oil, the smoke point is only 400. So you're not, you know, if you're trying to saute vegetables, you don't get enough heat to really get a decent sear going. So... So what I do is I would use like avocado oil for um, stir fry for like medium high heat. And then if I want it to taste like olive oil, I would turn it down to simmer and it's in, and sprinkle on a little extra virgin olive oil at the end. Uh, what happens when the olive oil gets overheated? It smokes. It's damaged. You make free radicals out. It becomes toxic. Okay. That's what I wanted to hear. I just want to make sure everyone knew. The smoke point of an oil it's not like you see a big billow of smoke. You know, some people say, well, I don't see all this smoke. It's when you pass the temperature that you pass the smoke point. If it's obviously smoking, okay, just stop, stop, throw it away, 
clean the pan with a paper towel and start over again. I mean, it's ruined if it's really smoking. I mean, now it's just toxic food. Um, but, you know, one of the myths that I would try to spell out is coconut oil has a, also a low smoke point. It's, it's less than extra virgin olive oil. It's only 350 degrees. And somehow this myth got generated. You can cook at high heat with coconut oil when, um, you know, the clean virgin cooking oil, coconut oils are not. They have a very low smoke point. So that's only they're only intended for low heat cooking. So like if I'm going to do a stir, stir fry curry and use coconut milk or coconut oil, again, I might use like macadamia nut oil or avocado oil. And at the end, reduce the heat to simmer and then add the coconut milk or the coconut oil. At the end. This is really good to know because I'm sure I've been guilty of heating up the coconut oil or the coconut milk way too high if I'm making a curry or a stir fry. So thank you for that. So yeah, that will just help protect you because none of us want bad trans fats, hydrogenated fats, damaged fats to be ingesting them. They're just not good for us. It's just like all fats are not created equal. So that whole fat free trend only applies to certain fats. And so it's more complicated than that. But that's how I grew up. Susie and Susie did too, right? Sus like we were at the grocery store. I thought everything was fat free when I was growing up. My mom never bought into any of that. <laughs> I was lucky okay, that way. Well, my your mom, mom was smart. Susie. I know she was. She was. Um, Enlightened. She was ahead of her time. She when she was pregnant with me, she went to the doctor and she said, "What should I eat for my baby?" And he said, "I don't know. You know more about nutrition than I do." And so when we when I was a kid in the eighties and that all happened, you know, she always thought everything in moderation. But she and she already knew we already ate a lot of fruits and vegetables to begin with. I mean, she was squeezing me fresh vegetable juice and putting it into my sippy cup. And so she was kind of ahead of her time. She, she never believed in any of that fat. She thought it was worse. You know, the cool. hy- obviously it yeah. was the hydrogenated fats and all that. Oh, and- yeah. I mean, that was insane, but we did, we went through that phase. So we were telling people to give up butter and eat margarine, which turned out to be toxic. She, ne- and oh she, yeah, she never did that. Never did that. So another fat that we really need. So your brain is like 60% fat. So we definitely want smart fats. But another fat we need comes from long chain omega threes. That's like from seafood, and you can get it from algae. And if you're, you know, vegan or vegetarian, you know, you don't like seaweed. Well, you can certainly get it. You know, taking a seaweed supplement like DHA. That's an excellent source to get your long chain omega threes because your brain's about forty percent DHA by weight, and without it, we're, we'd be risk being nutritionally deficient. So you can get it from algae as well. You can get it from eating, like, see, you go to a Japanese restaurant. I love the seaweed salad they have. Seaweed salad, yeah. yeah you can do a seaweed good. salad every day. But for some people, that's just not realistic. They're not going to do a seaweed salad every day. You know, I like taking those, those seaweed sheets that you make, like, you know, sushi out of, and I'll uh-huh. eat them for a snack, but people think I'm crazy for doing oh, that. Oh, those are delicious. They have them at Trader Joe's. This, yeah. yeah. The so, seaweed snacks, they're so good. Oh, my God. They are. So if you're them. eating like a seaweed salad every day or you eat five, ten of those sheets every day, you're getting your omega-3. But let's – I mean, realistically, okay, people probably think the three of us eat funny, but I'm really proud of <laughs> that. But, um, but if you don't, then you could take a DHA supplement. I mean, if you eat seafood, you could have like wild salmon. But what I really don't want people to do is eat the big mouth fish that they have like at restaurants, you know, tuna, grouper, snapper, bass, swordfish, all of those are very high in mercury. And mercury is one of the brain toxins we want to avoid. So definitely skip those fish. Probably your best, safest source would be like a DHA supplement or seaweed. But if you do eat wild salmon or sardines, um, not farm-raised, but wild, then that's an alternative source. But probably the easiest and cleanest would be, you know, the fish don't make it themselves. They get it from seaweed and it goes up the food chain. So the best source is really to start with the seaweed itself. That makes a lot of sense. So those are the healthy fats. And then the third category of foods I really want people to add are spices and herbs. They are anti-inflammatory. They're super good for your health. I've tried to work really hard in Better Brain Solution to use use spices and herbs in a way that makes your food taste good and it's easy to prepare. If I had to pick two of them, it would probably be like either Italian herbs or curry spices because those combos are very protective of the brain. I mean, the populations on the planet that have the lowest memory loss rates worldwide um, either eat a lot of curry or they eat a lot of Italian herbs and rosemary. So, curcumin, you know, turmeric, that yellow curry spice, 
has curcumin, which is a great product for your brain. And rosemary is probably the best of all of the herbs for brain protection, but um, basil, oregano, thyme, they're all fantastic. I'm drinking a turmeric latte right now, you guys. Oh, it's and whitening delicious. your teeth in the process. Dr. Massey, did you know turmeric also whitens your teeth naturally? I just learned this, and I'm a little yes. obsessed with teeth. <laughs> I did. It's I really would have thought it would have stained them yellow. So I really, no, right. you know, I'm learning something from you right it, now. It doesn't. If you, Food Heals Nation, if you haven't tried this, if you haven't heard it from our past episode with Drew, with Drew Cannoli. Cool. Um, it does. T- yeah. While you're doing it, it looks like you have a mouthful of Cheetos. And then once you rinse, <laughs> they're sparkly white. Nice. Yeah. Well, and it would probably be good for your gums and prevent gingivitis because it's so anti-inflammatory on top of it. Yeah. That. It feels wonderful. I love it. I bet. A new hack. A new t- tooth hack. <laughs> yeah. That's excellent advice. I'm really glad you shared that. So those are my top foods. Now, there are some foods that are really important to avoid. The number one cause of memory loss today. And remember, I should say the rate of memory loss is increasing faster than ever before. It's supposed to double 200% increase in just the next 12 years. I mean, it's going up rapidly. And the number one cause is because people are eating too much, too many refined carbs, too much sugar, too much flour. Um, You know, they're raising their blood sugar levels and they're hurting themselves with the wrong food. So as important it is, I have a dozen foods I like people to add every day. And I've tried to highlight some of those. It's equally important to cut down on sugar and flour because both of those really raise blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. And I love how the things that have health benefits have so many health benefits it's going to help the brain and then it's also going to do all these other things, whether it's clean your teeth or something else. And then the things that are bad also are detrimental to all different parts of the body. So you can feel so good when you eat these or incorporate these foods or herbs or spices into your diet. And you can also feel good when you get rid of something because you're doing so much good for your body. And thinking of the whole body, I mean, one of, the th- one of the, my 12 foods also is some source of probiotic that the probiotic bacteria for our gut, our microbiome are just essential. It makes a huge difference when we get those. Some source of kombucha or miso or um, sauerkraut, we really should be eating those every day um, to help nourish our guts. Cause you know, there's a big gut brain connection that's so important for health and um, lowering inflammation in all aspects. The gut is the second brain, right? It is. I mean, most of the neurotransmitters that the body makes that impact the brain, the majority of them are produced in the gut. Mm, It's incredible how connected everything is. And, you know, so, and there's also some food toxins out there we want people to avoid. I mean, I mentioned mercury from big mouth fish, um, but there's also nitrosamines. I mean, fortunately, if you're, you know, mostly plant-based, it cuts out the nitrosamines. But I at least want to mention them because people could have family members or something who are eating these. But when we think of animal products like sandwich meats and deli meats and hot dogs and bacon, and they sprinkle these nitrates on them, they're toxic. These nitrosamines, we've known for a long time they cause cancer. Okay, that's not good. But we also know they increase your risk for diabetes. Um, and blood sugar elevation, also not good, but they're neurotoxic. By just feeding like mice, you know, the equivalent of human servings of bacon, they get Alzheimer's disease. So people really need to cut out nitrosamines. Maybe in, with your tribe, hopefully that's not an issue, but they might have family members where they could say, well, at the least, if you eat them, you know, <laughs> they've got to be organic, you know, properly you know, raised, um, grass fed, but no nitrosamines. Nitrosamines are really toxic products. And fortunately, they don't really put them in, you know, like vegetable product, you know, vegetarian products. So that's really a blessing. Why do they put nitrosamines on the meat? Makes it last longer, longer it's profit. Preservative. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. And sell them longer on the shelf. So they make a bigger profit. And if we eat them, we get diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. Oh, thank you. I have a question. Um, I've heard that Alzheimer's is being called the type three diabetes. Have you heard anything about that? Oh, yeah. I mean, Dr. Suzanne Lamonte up in Rhode Island. I mean, she's spoken on this actually for several years. And it's true. I mean, it really, if your blood sugar is up, it literally shuts off your brain. When your sugars go up, I mean, and type three diabetes is elevated sugar, the higher the sugar level in your brain, the fatter you get, but the less energy your brain can use. 
It's like it's an off when your sugar levels go up and you're and you become what we call insulin resistant. If I could just explain this shortly. Insulin's the hormone that tells us to store energy. So if we eat rice or pasta or potatoes or bread or sugar, we get a sugar jump. And our insulin tries to push that into the cell. But what if your cells are full? You eat like that all the time. You don't exercise very much. They're full. They stop listening to insulin. They become insulin resistant. And in your fat tissues, you just keep getting fat. And your muscle, it just can't store any more glycogen because it stops because it's full. Your, your brain cells can't use glucose as energy when you're insulin resistant. So here's what would happen. I imagine if I looked at Alice and Susie's brain, you, if I was to give you a problem to solve and did a PET scan of your brain where we measured glucose metabolism burn, your brains would light up like a Christmas tree. But if I take someone who's got diabetes or insulin resistance because they're eating too many refined carbs, their brains look dead quiet. They look dark. There's nothing happening. The brain doesn't have any fuel. So not only do they have brain fog, you know, it's like you walk into the kitchen, you go, why am I here? Where's my car keys? You're reading a book and you have to reread the paragraph because you forgot what it says. You're trying to remember someone's name and you can't remember it. You know, those kind of things. That's brain fog. So that's a sign of shutting down your brain and your brain's not functioning. The biggest cause of that is elevated blood sugar levels. Wow. And I'm now I'm worried about myself because I think I'm all healthy, but I definitely, I walk into the room, I go, why am I here? Like, what, what, what did I come in here for? I've always been spacey like that though. Well, hopefully there's no sign of progression. I mean, yes, you could have some people like have never been good with names, but that doesn't mean their memory's going. They've just never been good with names. It might could just right. be the way you're wired. But that's, you know, that's why we have a quiz. I love the quiz because it actually helps you assess. Do you need to be concerned? If there's just one thing on there and it's been that way for years, you're probably stable and it's not progressing. But if you take my brain quiz and it shows several things off, that's like, uh-oh, <laughs> then, but then don't, no matter what your score and no matter what your age, the good news is you can improve your brain. You can make your brain better. We're not going to just fall apart. There's a lot, tons of stuff you can do with the Better Brain Solution to improve your brain function and make it awesome. I can't wait to take the quiz. I know we've already established that my brain's 11 years younger, but I need to make sure I'm not losing this this memory, this cognitive function. So I'm very excited. And um, I really enjoyed hearing about the insulin resistance. So can people actually reverse um, Alzheimer's as well? You know, my grandma had Alzheimer's and I watched it destroy her, destroy my mother, not know who we were. It was heart wrenching. It was heartbreaking. So are, are there, are there showing positive results in reversing Alzheimer's? It's tough. Let's be realistic. It's tough. We can prevent it. That is clear. We can prevent people in the future from getting Alzheimer's. If you only fix the blood sugar part, insulin resistance, I think we could get rid of 60%. If you followed all of my five steps to a better brain, I think we could prevent 90%. And everybody, no matter where they're at, can improve their brain function. But when you have Alzheimer's, that means basically your brain has shrunk from a grape to a raisin. I don't know of any data going on today that says we can bring someone all the way back and totally restore their brain. Can we give them some improvement? Can we stop their loss? Yes. Can you totally restore someone from Alzheimer's back to normal? I haven't seen that. Can you maybe get them so they're less impaired? Well, absolutely. There is published data. You can take someone with Alzheimer's and improve their brain function and give them some hope again and, you know, bide some time. But um, my, my goal is to help people. For, I've seen it. My mother-in-law, I loved my mother-in-law, Joy. She was an awesome woman. She got Alzheimer's. It was awful. And, you know, here's the worst part. Not only did she lose her memory, not only was she unable to tell which of her daughters was their daughter or not, she became a burden to the people she loved. Her husband died trying to take care of her. It killed him. And he was a wonderful, sweet, kind guy. And it killed him. I mean, taking care of someone with Alzheimer's, you know, your grandmother had it. It is terrible. So we have to prevent it. And we can prevent this. I'm so optimistic if we follow all five steps that we can prevent most of this. And who wouldn't want to improve their brain starting today? I mean, why not have a better brain and prevent memory loss at the same time? That's really my goal. 
Um, I know there's other people out there trying to reverse Alzheimer's. My goal is to take people who might have mild dysfunction and improve it and make them great. Or if you have a good brain, you make it even better. And to prevent people from memory loss, that's my purpose. That's what I want to help accomplish and change in the world today. And it starts with food. Absolutely, it does. And thank you so much for that. I'm, I'm really inspired right now to work on my brain too. And um, I know that you also talk about meditation for, um, is that one of the, the factors? And that's for stress reduction. And can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I love that question because, you know, you could eat really well and work out, but you could, if you're totally stressed out, you can shrink your brain. I mean, so, and I like purpose and challenge. I mean, I write books, I see patients, I do studies. I'm a husband. I have two kids. I mean, I am busy. <laughs> I enjoy purpose and challenge, but the truth is if we don't manage our stress, our cortisol levels will be high, and cortisol does several bad things to us if we don't manage our stress. Cortisol gives us, raises our blood sugar, not good. It makes us lose muscle and bone mass, not good. It increases artery plaque growth and heart disease. Clearly, that's bad. And it shrinks our brain, especially the memory center of the brain, the hippocampus. So we don't want elevated um, cortisol levels. And I think stress levels are higher now than they've ever been before. Yeah, It's not yeah, just absolutely. politics. You know, it's just, it's trying to be connected with our phones and devices 24 seven. I mean, yeah. we used to have a dark cave to go to and nobody could talk to you till the sun came up. You know? <laughs> that's changed. So we need to proactively, you said meditation. I think that's, people should spend, and it doesn't take that long. You don't have to spend hours. 10 minutes of effective meditation time every day can significantly lower cortisol, raise endorphins, raise oxytocin. It's really good for your brain. I mean, a workout's good for lowering your stress. A good night's sleep is essential. Meditation is fantastic. Um, but I got to say, romance and, romance and sex are really good for your brain too. And they're good for your heart. You know, it raises oxytocin, the bonding, cuddling hormone. And it lowers cortisol. So, you know, meditate, throw in some romance, get a good night's sleep. All of that's part of the Better Brain Solution to improving brain function. And it's essential. I mean, it just sounds like you're living a life that you love when you're getting all these things in. And so that by default also makes your brain healthier and happier because you're you're firing. You're not depressed. You're not you know, taking everything in, you are actually living your life and loving your life. I think that's so important. Well, you said that beautifully. And I, I think that was pretty profound the way you said that, that it really does make it. We do want to have fun. Scheduling and having fun is an important part of having a better brain. Because again, you raise oxytocin, you raise endorphins, the neurot neurotrophic factors, all these things heal and support your brain. So meditation, fun, I mean, most people don't think of it as a medical prescription. When I see someone who's depressed, I for depression, I use the same five steps. The right food, cut out the sugar, um, meet your nutrient needs, go be active, manage your stress, um, avoid toxins, but have some fun. I actually write on a prescription pad. You have to have two dates per week with someone who is fun and go out and do something that makes you laugh. Because oh, I, mean, I love that it's essential for our brain. I mean, and when, here's the sad part: when you probably have met people when when they're depressed, they're just trying to get through the day. They're struggling. I mean, you know, fun's the last thing on their mind. They're like, "How do I pay my bills and get my house cleaned up and put the kids to bed?" And then I'm that's it. That's all I got. I'm spent. And I think it's so important for them to schedule some fun in their days and make that difference. And I think that's a very important part of the Better Brain Solution. And how has the Better Brain Solution helped you? I've actually experienced that if I don't follow this, I can't get nearly as much done. I am a lot more productive. I'm amazed at how many projects I can get through in a day by following this. And if I don't do it, I feel more sluggish. I feel within a couple of days, if I'm not following what I preach, I don't like how I feel. People say, oh, you must love going to the gym because I go to the gym five days a week. And on my weekends, I ride a bike or I go out in the boat. I do something. And no, I don't love going to the gym, but I love how I feel when I eat well and I get a good night's sleep and I meditate and 
I schedule some fun and I eat lovely, wonderful food that's really nourishing for my art, my mind, body and soul. And, um, you know, I just feel I get so much more done. That's what I'm tr- that's for me what makes it worthwhile. I love it. And what do you hope to accomplish by publishing your new book? I would really like to help people be mentally sharper quicker, more productive. And I want to stop this. I've seen in my own family how awful memory loss is. I want to stop that. We got to get rid of it. Drugs don't work. You know, we spent billions and billions, hundreds of billions, maybe a trillion dollars. I don't know the exact amount on 200 FDA approved drugs. None of them have worked. We've got, we, we know lifestyle works. If you follow my five steps to a better brain, I, we know that works. The evidence is there. It's time for us to move forward. So I would like to help people prevent a public health disaster and feel fantastic at the same time. I'm really grateful for like podcasts like yours that are out there trying to teach people that food heals because that's really where we need to start. And I think together we can make a huge difference. Could not agree more. Thank you so much. Like you're preaching to the choir. We are exactly like you said, it's all about lifestyle. When you change your lifestyle, everything changes. So thank you so much. Can you just tell us a little bit about how people can find out more about you? You have your shopping guide, you have your quiz. What can we do to follow up with you? Get online, all that good stuff. If people want to take the quiz, you'll have a link for it. So they can go to your site and we'll have the quiz there they can click on. Go in and take it. only takes one, 60 to 90 seconds. Really easy. It's going to give you some uh, immediate results and give you an idea of how you're doing. And no matter what your score, don't worry. You can still make your brain better. So don't worry what the score is going to be. Um, either way, we're there to help you. And as a bonus, I'm going to give you my Better Brain um, solution, the you know the Better Brain shopping guide, 12 foods to add, 12 foods to avoid, that it helps you ensure you've got a better brain and make you know shopping quick, quicker, easier, and you make sure you come home with the right foods like dark chocolate. Don't forget the dark chocolate, just as an example. Amazing. And so that's all going to be up at foodhealsnation.com slash better brain. All right. Can you leave us with a little nugget of wisdom, a tweetable, anything you want to leave our listeners with today? Well, you asked also about um, more information. If people want to follow my blog or hear from me, they can go to my website and sign up, drmasley.com, D-R-M-A-S-L-E-Y.com. So if they want to hear more from me, they're happy to. But here would be my take-home message. People are procrastinators. And they wait for something bad to happen to say, okay, I need to make a change, right? That's human nature. But with your brain, the problem is by the time you have symptoms, that means you've probably had it for years and your brain has already shrunk. Don't wait. My advice is don't wait till you have a shrunken brain. Do something <laughs> in advance. Take steps today to prevent that and you'll feel better at the same time. I want people to feel awesome. I want to help take them by the hand to ensure they succeed. That's my goal. And that's my really advice is check in now. Start with the quiz. Take that quiz on your website and get started with the shopping list and take steps to have a better brain as soon as possible. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Dr. Masley, for being here today. Uh, Thank you. I mean, this was really fun. You were both great. Love the questions. Really appreciate the work you're doing in the community. All right, Food Heals Nation, don't forget to take Dr. Masley's quiz at www, use that, www.foodhealsnation.com slash betterbrain. Hope you enjoyed that interview. I know it meant a lot to me um, because, you know, I always talk about my parents and cancer and um, autoimmune disease when my mom had uh, multiple sclerosis, but I haven't really talked a lot about my grandmother who had Alzheimer's. And that's always been in the back of my mind that you know, I don't want to get Alzheimer's. And so to hear the better brain solution and the fact that we can absolutely prevent this from happening was really, really, it just meant a lot to me. And I think if you're listening and you know someone who might need this information, definitely share this podcast because there's so much that we can do to better our brain. So thanks, Dr. Masley, for being here. And 
I don't think that Susie and I can currently end a podcast without talking about Italia. (laughs) Italia. We're kind of obsessed. Leslie Durso has partnered with us. She is, you know her from multiple episodes of the Food Heals podcast by now, but she's this gorgeous vegan chef. She's the one that brought us cupcakes and champagne, vegan cupcakes, when she first came to our podcast. And she is so much fun. She's just lovely. Lovely. She's fun and fabulous and she makes good food. What else do you need to know? Right. Exactly. Like <laughs> Exactly. Drop, <incredible>. Mic drop. <laughs> mic drop. Boom. So one thing I feel like we haven't talked about enough is the schedule. Like, what are we doing on this trip? And obviously, anyone who wants to can go right now to www.foodhealsnation.com slash Italy, download the schedule, download the brochure. But Susie, let's just go through it a little bit. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Well, you're going to arrive in Naples and you get picked up and you get brought to a villa. And that's all included in in the price. So you don't have to pay for this transportation. You have to pay for your flight, but you don't have to pay for this transportation. We've got it all covered. That's right. The only only thing you have to pay for beyond this is your lunch because we're going to be out and about. We don't know where we're going to have lunch. We're crazy like that. So (laughs) breakfast and dinner are covered. Lunch is on you and any alcohol when we're out. Um, But then all of our excursions and everything else, your room, all included. Yes, it's a really good deal. So the first day, we'll pick you up. Everyone's going to be a little bit jet lagged, so we're going to take it easy. We'll settle in and get to know each other in our gorgeous villa on the Amalfi Coast. We'll have some pizza. We'll have some wine. There will be options for everyone, vegan, gluten-free, whatever you need. No worries. And then I think the the retreat really starts on Sunday once we've gotten our sleep. So what are we going to do on Sunday? We're going to explore Ravello, which is a nearby town. We're going to visit some gardens, the Duomo, as well as a a thousand-year-old church. And there's going to be plenty of time to explore. And just so you know, you will have time. This is You're not locked in like some of those tour groups that sometimes make you do things. You know, you have flexibility and freedom to kick back and relax. But um, also we're going to have, you know, options for you. So we are going to be guiding you around to go get espresso and olive oil tastings at the back of the villa. And that's all on Sunday. And Monday, we're going to hike to Santa Croce Beach and rejuvenate on the rocky sand. And Amalfi has, um, it's not soft sand. It's kind of uh, more granular, uh, but beautiful. The water is as azure blue. It's spectacular. Best pictures ever, P.S., all you Instagrammers out there. I mean, your Instagram is going to blow up from this trip. Yeah, Just it's going to be insane. Just We're going to stroll towns and shops on Monday. We're going to eat lemon ices, gelato, and enjoy the vibrance of the city. Dinner is going to be at the villa. And then Tuesday, what are we doing Tuesday, Allie? Tuesday, we're going to start at the local farmer's market, and then we're going to spend the day in the kitchen with Leslie, who is obviously, she's of Italian heritage. So basically, she takes all the Italian food that she grew up with and makes vegan healthy versions of it. And so we're going to learn recipes with Leslie, and we're going to use all that fresh organic produce that we bought and put them in seasonal dishes. And then at night, we're going to drink some Italian wine, which is obviously me and Susie's favorite thing to do a little (laughs) bit. Um, And we're going to do a special Food Heals Nation podcast, a broadcast from Italy. So we'll be talking about our experience in Italy and we'll be interviewing anyone who wants to be on the podcast you're going to be on. It's going to be like a really fun roundtable discussion of our Italian experience, so our, our wellness experience. So I'm really looking forward to that. Wednesday, that is our nature walk down to the path of the gods. Have you been there, Suze? That I have not, no. Okay, so I haven't either. I hear that this is an incredible hike. It's from Ravello to Positano. Suzy, am I saying it right? I'm probably butchering that. Yes, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were like, yes, you're butchering it. Please delete that. Um, I'm sorry, Food Heals Nation or any Italians who are listening who know that I, I do not have the accent down like Susie does. I'll, wor- um, I'll work with you. Don't worry. Oh, yes. We'll thank make, you. We'll mail it. I need that. And so we're going to walk down the mountainous coastline of Amalfi down 2,500 steps that lead you into 
Positano. Is that how I say it? So Positano. Yes. Positano. So in town, we'll have more free time. We're going to swim, browse the art, the galleries, and just enjoy those picturesque views, take lots of Instagram pictures, have lunch on the beach. And then we'll be back to Ravello for dinner at one of Leslie's favorite Italian restaurants. I mean, could this get any better? Go ahead. Tell me about Thursday. (laughs) Uh, Maybe. Thursday is Nature Cure Day, a time to focus on inner and outer beauty and relaxation. We're going to do homemade herbal body and face scrubs, as well as hot and cold water treatments in the grotto on our property and a lovely risotto dinner prepared by Leslie with optional cooking lesson. I mean, I feel like Thursday is the relaxation day where we're at the villa and that's the day just to like pamper ourselves. So I'm really excited about that. Friday, we've got another hike. We're going to hike down to Minori and Miori. I think I'm saying that right. That's going to be an early lunch in town followed by a boat ride along the coast. We're going to stop for swimming. And then dinner is going to be a special vegan tasting that Leslie set up. It's a meal at Villa Maria, and it's best known for its romantic sea view terraces. And there's pictures of this beautiful uh, restaurant online that you can see. And there will be an exclusive menu curated by Leslie. So that's going to kind of be the end to our trip before we leave on Saturday. I'm so excited, Susie. Just going through that with you it gave me chills. Like, I cannot believe we're doing this. I'm so Oh, excited. it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so much fun. So join us. Won't you? www.foodhealsnation.com slash Italy. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately. 